This video is brought to you by the book, The Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the classic staple of flight training, revised and updated for modern-day flight training. It even includes chapter summary videos to help you fully understand each chapter. Visit m0a.com forward slash store to learn more and grab your copy. Hey everyone, Jason Shappert here of m0a.com and welcome to day 28. VOR navigation is the topic uh, of day 28 in our 31 day to safer pilot challenge. Um, and what I want to do is I actually want to share with you guys a clip I did a while ago that I really think explains uh, from a, a top-down sort of view, VOR navigation in a, uh, in a really uh, great way. So what I want to do is I want to take a second and go ahead and cut to that clip uh, to help you have a better understanding of how to use uh, VOR on your cross-country and for your navigation techniques. Let's cut to that clip. VOR navigation is one of the most difficult things I personally think for student pilots to really get down. You are going to learn so much in this simulation. I hope it all makes sense. If not, you guys know how to get in touch with me to ask questions. Uh, before we do that, let's talk about the real VOR basics. First off, let's look at our little map side here. This is our VOR, this guy here. Now the VOR is spitting out 360 degrees worth of radials all right now you can navigate to VORs you can navigate from VORs there's two radials and from radials okay actually heading to um, a VOR it's called a bearing heading away from it it is actually called a radial but you commonly find I myself do it most of the time anyways Everybody just calls to and from a radial. But the proper terminology is if you're heading to it, it's a bearing. If you're heading away from it, it's a radial. Um, all of that aside, though, you need to know this is 360 degrees. Okay? On your check ride, or just in navigation in general, but specifically on your check ride, you may be asked, I want you to intercept and track the 230 radial. I want you to intercept and track the 090 radial from the station. Now, how can you do that? That's looking at this, you say, well, 090, it's here, but but I'd be heading 090 this way, but this is the 090 radial. It can be real confusing. And this multi-step process I'm going to give you is going to make you a shoe-in for VOR navigation. So the first thing you need to do you need to ask yourself this question. Where am I in relation to the VOR? Now, this is jumping a bit ahead. This is assuming you've already tuned up to the right frequency and you've also positively identified the VOR using the Morse code identifier. All right? So that's assuming that already. Answer this question. Where are you in relation to this VOR? So here's our aircraft. You can see we're tracking a 070 heading, and our OBS is set to 090, which you can see we've depicted like this, okay? And it's on a two side because uh, green is two, this purple would be a from. So 090 falls on the two side of things. Well, where are we in relation to it? The first thing you need to do is center up your OBS, your VOR indicator, with a two indication. So let's show you how we do this. Now we could sit here, and I could click this all day and, and let it move, but I'm going to type this in and show you here. Two, three, zero. So look at that. We are a two, three, zero radial from the station. Okay, well that sort of helps us. What's the reciprocal of that? Reciprocal of 230 is 050, zero, okay? 050 zero, to the station. Let me just kind of backtrack a bit so you can see what I'm talking about here. When I spin this thing, let's see if I can get it to, to spin and cooperate. There we go. See how the needle's moving? You would want to spin it and see how our heading's changing. Let's put it back to a zero, 
five zero Oop, wrong way so I can get it going back 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 and it's tough with the cursor. I'm just going to type it in, but 045, we got close. But you can see what I mean. We spin that until this needle is centered up. Now, we know if we turn to a heading of 050, that would take us right to the station. Okay, how do I know that? Well, let's put that in as our heading. Watch that, 050. Well, check that out. It's pointing us right towards the station. Doesn't that make sense? It's a 050 radial to head to the station. It's a 230 radial if you're heading from the station. Please don't get confused with to and from. So we knocked out the first step. Where are we in relation to the station? Well, we are a 050 radial to the station. So we are what? We're somewhere to the southwest of this VOR. Now we don't have any DME in this scenario, but you would also, you know, if you had DME in the aircraft distance measuring equipment, you would know I'm so many miles to the southwest from this VOR. And that is the real basic part of VOR navigation, found out where we're at. Now let's think about something a little bit more complex. Your checkride examiner or your flight instructor asks you the following question. I want you to intercept and track the 090 radial inbound to the station. Or remember we said a, a bearing is a 2, so the 090 bearing to the station. So, remember the first thing we did, we found out where we were. So I say, okay, I know where I'm at now. I know where I am in relation to that VOR. Now, I'm going to take my OBS, my VOR indicator, and I'm going to turn it to 090. And look where our needle went. Our needle went to the left. Well, where is our course? Look at the top-down view. Our course is to our left. Now, does that make sense? The needle went to the left, so our course is to the left when we're on a two indication. We're on the two indication because we found out where we are in relation to the station at first. All right, so our course is to our left. Well, look in this top down view, seeing this line here, we need to fly to this line and then make a right turn to fly 090 inbound. You see, think about it like you're jumping on the interstate. We're on an on ramp and the acceleration ramp trying to get on the interstate. We're heading towards it, then we're gonna make that turn onto the interstate. That makes sense? We can see the courses that way. So, we know flying this 050 heading isn't gonna get us to the 090 radial. We need to put in an intercept. Well, how much of an intercept do we wanna put in? It all depends really on how close you are. In this situation, we're, we're uh, a few miles out, we're, we're quite a ways out actually, because this is a 30 nautical mile view of everything. So we're about halfway there, maybe 15, 12 to 15 miles out. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna start, maybe turn us 30 degrees, maybe turn us all the way to north. All right, let's see what that would do. Let's, uh, let's adjust our heading here and let's turn our heading to zero, I'm sorry, to 360, all right? So if we turn our heading to 360, all right, and we flew that, you can see how that needle should start coming in. Let's go ahead and play the simulation and watch this. So we are flying. You can see our airplane is just barely moving here. So we're going to keep flying along. And as we're flying, of course, as a good student, we're holding level and everything else. But we are waiting for this needle to come in. Once this needle reaches what I call the top of the donut, the top, and that's not a scientific term, by the way. Um, you won't find that in any flight manuals. Um, the top of this donut here, we want to start that turn to zero, 09 or zero. So let's see how we're approaching this line. Watch this, and let's start to watch our needle here. See if you can keep your eyes on both, both of those at the same time and watch. So as we're coming in, it's going to come in quick because we've got 90 degrees. Look, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. And here it comes. We reach the top of the donut. There it is. I just paused it here. That's what I mean by our needle touching the top of the donut. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our airplane and we're going to turn it to our 090 heading. It'll actually be, we need to go a little bit further. We'll simulate we're actually turning here. Let's do 070 just so we can let it come in a little bit more. And we'll play our simulation some more. You can see our needle's still creeping in, creeping in, creeping in. And see how we just kind of made that gradual turn around? And here comes our needle, watching it down here. It's centered up. I'm going to pause the simulation again, turn us right to that 090 heading, and play it. And that is how we did it. We were down here. We found out where we were in relation to the VOR. We then found out our instructor wanted us to intercept and track the 090 radial. Well, no sweat once you know where you're at on a two indication. Okay, not a problem at all. We centered it up to 090 on the OBS down here. We saw the needle was, was fully pegged, full deflection all the way to the left. All right, so we saw that and uh, we knew our course was to the left. We looked at the top down view and we saw, of course, it was to the left. So we put in our intercept. Now I had 90 degrees off of the course and we took a 90 degree, a right angle right at that thing. Now you can also take something a little bit more gradual. You could sneak in. We could have flown maybe a 070. 060 might have put you a little bit too close and ended up right here. My purpose was I just wanted to get us on it as soon as possible so you guys could see. But you may not want to do something this drastic. You obviously can't go much past 9 degrees, otherwise you're making a real severe turn. But we came at it. You could do less than 9 degrees and come at it. Just remember, when that needle reaches the top of the donut, you begin your turn. If you need to fix your course, like in this case, our needle went a little bit more to the right. I'm just going to correct maybe 5 degrees to the right to help hold that, to help keep that needle centered. All right, guys, so I hope that clip uh, helped you understand your VR navigation a bit better. Sorry it was so long, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. And again, any questions, uh, leave them on saferpilotchallenge.com underneath this video uh, in the comment section. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.